Um, my, my son Elijah and our friend Michael Bryan, they're from Rayburn Elementary School in McAllen ISD. They're passing out some um, post-its that you guys can keep as well as some pens so that you can remember um, who we are. So uh, I think we should give them a round of applause for being awesome and coming here. <laughs> uh, my son's a fourth grader and, and my uh, our friend Michael Bryan is a fifth grader. So uh, they're really excited to be on a college campus. They immediately think that all of you guys are cool and awesome and the smartest things ever. Um, they were shocked here at our friend Roger because he's talking about all this amazing stuff and they just like couldn't believe it. So it's exciting to have them here. Um, my name is Dalinda Gonzalez Alcantar, and this is our creative design officer for Educom, David. Um, David recently graduated from UTPA, and in 2008, I actually received my master's here from Pan Am, so uh, we're both alumni, and I'm really excited to be back on the campus to talk uh, to you all today. So, um, well, this is who we are. It's Educom, and it's, uh, uh, we kind of want to share with you a little bit about our story, and uh, we can go ahead and get started. So. Um, first of all, what Educom creates and um, what we specialize in are actually mobile applications for Android and for Apple. And our main purpose is to bridge the communication gap between the schools and um, their families and community members using smartphones. What you're going to see up here are actually different examples. The really cool thing about what we do that um, our competitors still do not do um, is we create them unique and specific to every single campus and every single district. What you see up here is a very uh, unique product that is very design intense and very design heavy. Um, some of the schools that you see up here now, like we do have our mobile applications all across the country, but we do have our small little office slash moonbeams in McAllen, Texas um, that we work out of. Um, the one that you're seeing up here is for Hamptons, Virginia, for Hampton City Schools. We have applications in Philadelphia, in California, and of course here in Texas. So that's what you're kind of seeing, and that awesome design work that you're seeing is, is actually David's up here. Um, most recently, we took on uh, Cannon Middle School in, I mean, Cannon Elementary in Grapevine, Texas. So that's actually their app that's waiting for the Apple gods to approve it. Um, we, all have, we always cross our fingers with those, right? Um, some of the cool things that you're kind of seeing on the screen right there, um, we build, like I said, unique to the initiatives on every single campus, and we'll talk to you a little bit of, uh, later about how we know those things. Um, and more recently, we've been taking on some additional mobile applications that affect education. We're super honored that we can say that Sylvan in the Rio Grande Valley, they are our client now, and we are helping them with an initiative called in-home tutoring. We are um, their pilot program for Sylvan National. And if they love the way our product works here in the, the Valley, we're actually going to be picked up as a client nationwide. So we're really excited about that. I want to very quickly tell you our story. Um, I am a mom. Uh, my, my daughter's actually not here with us today, but she is three years old. And so shout out to Madeline. Um, she's at home and she's staying warm. Um, so I'm a mother and I am an educator. My passion is education, and more importantly, um, my research and what I love to figure out is for us to have effective family engagement in our schools. So actually, that's how our story began. I was teaching out of a classroom in McAllen ISD, having a very difficult time communicating with my families, realizing that a lot of them didn't have internet access. I was working at a campus where we have a very large apartment population. So um, we all think that everybody has internet. And we actually forget that a lot of people don't even work behind a desk. We just assume they have lives a lot like ours where really they don't. And I started surveying some of my parents and surveying the students and realizing that they're using their Android devices as their main form of internet. So I'm like, man, I got to get to these people somehow. So my principal said, if you can figure out um, how to create an app, sure, you can do it. I don't think he knew that I, I, don't, I don't think he thought that I would be able to figure it out. Um, I didn't think I would be able to. But the internet has proven to have all the great free and fun information for us to learn how to do anything. So I actually learned on YouTube. Um, I learned on a forum called BuzzTouch, which they now, um, they now support all of our technology and help us out with a lot of the really great plugins that we're needing and our schools are asking for. 
Um, so that's kind of our story. I know that we went past it a little bit, but um, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about, I guess, that has been such a blessing for us is um, Parenting Magazine um, actually ran a competition, and they were looking for one mom um, for every state to represent them at this really cool thing called Mom Congress in Washington, D.C. And Mom Congress allows you to actually be in the same room as Secretary of, Arne, uh, Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan. Now you might not be like super amped about that, but I am, <laughs> but I am, um, I mean it was like an honor, you know, um, to, to be in the same room as the Secretary of Education. I don't stalk him on Twitter, but I like to see all the great things he's doing all the time. And so uh, they chose me to go to Washington DC to actually represent, Oh, baby, that's so nice. Thanks, son. Um, they, they actually chose me to represent the state of Texas at Mom Congress because of Educom and what we created. Um, even more exciting is that Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan only highlighted two moms in, in his speech, and one of it was, or um, one of those moms was me. So I was really excited. We were steps away from uh, the White House, and you know they flew us over there, and it was such an excellent opportunity. So I was really amped about that. Um, that's kind of how our story began. And I'll just br very briefly talk to you about um, you know, the actual coding experience and some of the errors, um, some of the challenges. I think the biggest challenge with a startup, at least in my life, everybody's lifestyles are very different. But uh, the biggest challenge for me was and continues to be the balance between being a mom, being, you know, having a home, um, having my children, and then wanting to affect education in this like, awesome opportunity to continue to grow a startup, kind of like almost passion. Um, I've kind of been placed in a position where we can really highlight the awesomeness of the Valley and of you know, McAllen more so. And I really take that responsibility and I want to do the best job that I can with it. Um, but being said, you know, that's probably our biggest struggle or my biggest struggle and my biggest challenge. So on that note, what's helped me to balance all of that is actually my creative design officer, David. So he's He's up next. We got the five minute um, we got the five minute signal, so thank you. <clears throat> so I'm I'm gonna talk a little bit about what it takes to um, I guess to work in a startup here. First off, it takes a lot of coffee. As in it takes a lot of long long nights, you know, early mornings. Um, I thought that you know once I graduated, that's kind of kind of going to be over now because I don't have any tests to cram for or any assi last minute assignments to do, but that's not the case. Um, you know you still have a lot of things to take care of. You know you have clients waiting on you, depending on you. So, coffee helps. Okay, um, but like I said, I'm uh, I'm a UTPA graduate. I graduated this past December, a uh, degree in communication, public relations, uh, and a minor in graphic design. So. I guess the main thing that I want to emphasize with working in a startup, you know, uh, in its infancy, is you got to wear a lot of hats, you know. So, you know, I do the public relations part of it too, of course, the graphic design part and the business customer services part. You know, public relations, we, we do things like we develop marketing strategies, you know, big ideas. So we, you know, right now our, our, our main kind of idea is your school everywhere. And that's the, that's the kind of, that sums up what we do, what we're trying to do, and you know, the message that we're trying to send. We're trying to put your school everywhere. Um, another thing is, before we had uh, you know, your school in the palm of your hands, you know, we tried different ideas, we brainstormed, we throw some out, we you know, put some in. Um, before that, we had uh, 500 for, uh, 50 for 500 project. So we have clients all over the United States. Uh, we have a client in uh, Rigetti, Rigetti High School, I think. They're from California. We have uh, Canon, which is, they're, they're from Grapevine, Texas. We have Hampton City Schools, they're from Virginia. We have NAP, which is from Philadelphia. So we have schools all over the place. We have clients all over the place. And so one of the things that helps us a lot, you know, with corresponding with them is, is well, basically the internet. You know, you have Google, you have Google now, which gives you uh, Google Hangout services. You know, you can, it, it's basically like video conferencing. I mean, you guys used it before, Skype. Um, except that Google lets you share your screen for free. At Skype, you have to pay a premium, which is ridiculous. But I'm not going to get into that. Um, you know, that's the beauty of the 21st century. You know, you can correspond. You can talk to clients from 1,300 miles away. 
you know, and so we use technology like crazy. Dropbox, I'm sure you guys have used it. We, we create these uh, video simulations of what your app will look like and what it will do and the colors and, you know, the functions. And we send that, you know, 500 megabyte file over Dropbox and then they will uh, download it on their side. Technology, you know, it's amazing. Um, we use QuickTime uh, to, to record on, on our screen and it's, it, it comes with the Mac and it's, it's amazing. So, you know, there, there are a lot of different things that, you know, you have to do. Business, you know, I, I'm not a business major. I don't really do with uh, human resources stuff, but I have to correspond with our clients. Uh, I have to make sure that they, they know that we're still there and that, um, you know, the colors are just, just right. So as a graphic designer, of course, I'm using Illustrator and Photoshop. And if, they, if, they, if that red is just too bright, then I have to, you know, tone it down a bit. If the icon is, it doesn't fit, then have to resize it to 72 by 72 pixels. So from a graphic designer's point, you know, I have to deal with that. From a marketing perspective, we, you know, we have different features. Push notifications, we sell that, you know. We throw in the iPad version free. It makes our product that much more lucrative. So we have to kind of wear all these different hats. You know, I have, I, sure I graduated with a major, but I'm doing all kinds of different things. So we learned so much from, from our time from the, you know, the time that we've had. Uh, we just kind of want to leave you with some things that we feel are the most important aspects of our business and that we would like to just push forward with. So bring it back to Dalinda. Oh my, <laughs> my son, he's like the biggest fan ever. That's why I brought him actually, because I knew he was going to start the applause in case nobody else did. Um, thanks, son. Um, so just really quickly, three years later, so here's the deal. I mean, we are a startup, and we constantly, constantly have to be learning. And that's going to be the biggest thing. If you're going to have a technology startup and be successful, you have to be super prepared to learn everything all the time. I feel bad for David. David has to learn things, and he's just like, okay. And half the time, I don't know, like, how long it's going to take him. And, but he just does it and rolls with it. I appreciate that. I also appreciate David because he's, he has me as a founder, and I think sometimes females are impossible to work with. Uh, and he's so great. He's just, like, cool with it. Um, but three years later, we, we kind of want to leave you all with this. Um, of course, we don't have all the answers, and I'm always learning from everybody, and I'm cool with that. Um, I always like to say I don't have the answers. You know, remember, I, I wasn't a technologist by nature. I used technology to solve a problem. And unfortunately, there were private companies everywhere that were going to charge me way too much money to build what I wanted for my school, so I decided to just build it myself. Um, so I think I want all you all to keep, you know, to keep that in mind. You don't have to be a technologist to be able to, to do this. Um, so three years later, it's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about David. Um, it's about all of the millions of students that we want to affect and their families that we want to connect. So it really has nothing to do with us and our tool. Um, we want to keep our identity true. I mean, this is our story that we're sharing with you. And sometimes I forget that we started in a classroom. You know, sometimes I forget what that was like to, to want to connect, and that was a problem. We always have to remember the problem that, you know, that, that we solved with this. Um, the next thing is really learning to adapt to our market. You know, it's sick, and a lot of you guys know this, that are, that are technologists. You know, there's, there's awesome tools that are coming out all the time, and if we want to stay relevant in our market, that means we have to learn that. So when push notifications came out, and one of our clients said, okay, so when are we going to have push notifications? I actually had no idea what they were talking about. But then I Googled it, and then we learned, and then it was awesome. All right, well, it wasn't that easy, but that's the synopsis of it. Um, and then the last thing, we build what our customers want. You know, you have to have something that's different from everybody else. We're having to compete against like major companies all across the nation and all across the world that I know some of y'all might be looking at this saying, well, that might be simple. Yes, but what we do is relevant to our customer because I know education. That's what I'm passionate about. And so I talk to educators and it's relevant. I'm a mom, so I know what I want on my smartphone and what I want to be able to do through the app. And so, you know, we really do build what our customer wants. So on that note, if uh, anybody has any questions, we'd like to open it up to a couple of questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, well, it's general information, but it's also things that, you know, we know that almost 60% of parents that were surveyed, they said they, they, the main form of communication that they want is emailing, e emailing teachers. They, they don't want a phone call. You know, teachers, be honest with you, you know, we, we have random conference times, like at 822. Like, really, you're going to get a phone call at 822 to 850. So um, we, you know, in two clicks, I get to email his teacher, you know, at HEB, which is awesome. Um, so we do stuff like that. We simplify all of that information. We constantly survey our parents to see what they want. They really want simple things like schedules. They want to have that stuff, you know, I'm, I'm at the office 5 o'clock. My kid has a game at 630. Where is it? Well, I, you know, I check my device. Um, some of the technology they do have on campus, however, we, um, we don't get into those systems because we don't, um, our mobile applications don't run off of student server, I mean, off of their servers. However, we, we are FERPA compliant with data. Um, so say, for instance, they have like a content management system, we just embed that login. So it makes everything easy and more accessible. So it's kind of like a backpack, you know, with all of the most important stuff that's happening. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, well, one thing in terms of in terms of people not being imp like really tech savvy, we actually have to be more concerned with like the teachers and the educators that are that are using our control panel. Um, because I think that what's super important as technologists is that we could have a super cool product, but if it's way too difficult to use, then like nobody's going to use it. So you have to always have the user in mind. Um, our control panels, once these apps are published, like once they go live, we give the technologists and teachers access to be able to like change information and then just click save and it's live. So our control panels are actually like really image intense, you know. They're kind of guides and tutorials as you go through them. So it's really not difficult for a teacher to be able to like use it to make changes. And then in terms of parents that are using the device, um, we send schools marketing material so that they can make sure to advertise all of that to parents and grandparents. And along with that marketing material, we send like download instructions in English and Spanish. Um, a lot of us might take for granted that people know how to use Google Play or the App Store, but the reality is a lot of the moms and dads that we want to get to, they don't. So if, they, if we send them like really cool instructions on like, hey, if you follow these instructions, you get to know what your kid's doing on campus, they're going to do it. So that's kind of how we communicate with them. Yeah. Sometimes schools aren't necessarily uh, schools aren't necessarily prepared or or, or have uh, like their school logos just on hand ready to give to us. So a lot of the times I had to take it from their website, you know, and then they'll ask, "How did you how did you get our logo?" You know, it's on the website. It's not always high resolution. Um, and you know, one time uh, Apple asked us for a 1024 by 1024 image of the school logo, and that's a, that's a pretty big image that they they didn't have. So I had to recreate it uh, in Illustrator, and and that particular logo was really challenging because it was a it was a star with uh, a it was, and it was a gradient to it was like blue going to white, and then inside that was another star going from orange to yellow. Inside that is another star. It was the worst logo. Like, I, I thought, you know, a graphic designer, what is he thinking when he's you know? And uh, so that's one of the challenges. Uh, our primary concern uh, from a design perspective is is um, we want to make it user friendly, and we have to think of our users, uh, parents, you know, older older moms and dads who aren't looking for anything flashy, aren't looking for anything impressive like cool transitions. You know, they want to know where everything is and where it leads you, and they want to be able to go back if they didn't they made a mistake or go go forward like wait do that again or it may just start over. So we we design our apps as such, and of course you know every school they they love their, their school colors and their logos and stuff like that. Like this one, for example, that's Bassett Elementary School. Their, their uh, school logo or their school animal is a panda, which is really cool. Um, so we, you know, we, we do that. And each school is, custom, is customized in that way. So, that, I mean, to answer your question, that's a challenge. Uh, what do you see the trend draw or any opportunities for individuals to prepare and use the in, uh, in the area of, of education and mobile apps, um, actually, we're, we, I can't say the names out loud, but there's a San Francisco-based company that we've been having really great conversations with for about six months now. And um, we're, we're wanting to have a button on every one of our apps that is, they have an awesome text messaging software that they can actually, that's very inclusive. They're already using it in schools, and they really like what we're doing, and I think their, their work is awesome too. So we're actually transitioning to like making sure that um, those people that feel more comfortable with text messaging 
will be able to, through that button, be able to communicate in that way with their teachers in the classroom. So now it will actually become more intimate in terms of the classroom setting because there will be, if you're log, you know, as a parent, I'd be able to log into that one button that will be featured on our app, and then I'll be able to correspond with the teacher directly. Not to her device, of course not, for safety purposes, but with a number that was pre-assigned to her. So, you know, just constantly evolving with what people are asking for, actually. Yes. Yeah. Um, actually, right now, McAllen ISD, and that's why we really didn't feature them, we're in the process of updating it to what um, Hampton City Schools has. They were on board, but it was actually just at the secondary levels, which included like the campus that I was at, at De Leon, and then they had Mackay and stuff like that. Um, McAllen ISD has actually been really, really important to us because they are, they've worked with us the most in the sense of like, what do the customers want? We originally started off by actually building an app separately for every single campus. So Rayburn Elementary School was actually up there several years ago. It's our old design. We actually just unpublished it. But what we learned was that if you want to do a school district app, um, it should all be in one app as opposed to separately sitting on the app store. So McHale and ISD pulled back and we decided to like reconfigure to something that Hampton City Schools. Um, so a lot of, but, but to answer that question in terms of a parent is that we do send all the marketing materials that we have um, to the schools and then it, it really is just like any other software or anything else that they have. It's really up to the schools to then market it and make sure that their parents are using it, you know. So that's kind of how it goes. Yes, John? There is a growth strategy. Um, partnering with regional service centers um, is, is, is really, really key for us this year. And because they, we can actually leverage their marketing dollars, we save you know, potentially thousands and thousands of dollars by being able to do so. Um, being able to uh, partner up with other really relevant um, educational partnerships so that, yes, they get a little, a little tiny cut of, of what we make, but we have their stamp of approval of being this legit and awesome software. Um, so that's really where our growth is going to come from. We've also grown because of social media. That's our biggest thing is putting out relevant content through our blogs and through social media. Um, in fact, there's, um, I started out of an AVID classroom, and they are, and AVID is this international awesome college and career readiness program that I'm still in a campus now at Bella High School in Edinburgh. Um, we're, you know, in talks with them as well. So it's really all about the partnerships to leverage kind of their marketing assistance. Do you have ever had any plans to uh, expand internationally? Yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to. And we've had quite a few inquiries. Australia, um, a base in, in the United States. Um, they, you know, because of course they have, um, you know, they have schools on their bases. And I don't want to say that one out loud, but yeah, you know, so uh, it's exciting because we get inquiries from, from all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, baby. <laughs> How many apps do I want to make? As many as we can. As many schools as will let us. All right, awesome. Well, if you can follow us on Twitter, we're up there. And on Facebook, I know we, we gave a shout out to, to Tech Tuesdays, but it was really cool hanging out with you guys. And if you have any other questions, um, I will tell you that we have been actively looking for uh, somebody to do HTML, because this is like, you know, that's Tech Tuesdays thing, right? Um, you know, so if you're looking for an internship, um, paid and paid and also unpaid, um, but you're going to learn a lot from us, and you're going to learn what a real startup is like. So that'll be exciting. All right, thank you so much.